subject tonight we're dealing with is not the quantity, but the quality. Not the quantity, but the quality. And sometimes bigger is not better. <laughs> sometimes the smaller, the, the number, sometimes even, well, we're not looking into the numbers, but we're looking into the quality because so many times you can do more with two that's pulled in the same direction than you can with 20 pulled in the opposite direction. Amen. But as we get into this lesson, uh, there's many layers in it, and so um, I want to tie in some things from Sunday. But Genesis 3 and 15, many people think that Christianity started when Christ was um, upon the earth and he established the church. But Christianity and Judaism all started, uh, it was pronounced in Genesis. It was not pronounced as Christianity or Jude Judaism, but it was uh, promised that a Messiah, that a, uh, the seed of a woman, which was going to be uh, the, the anointed one, the one that God would touch. Now I want you to understand this. The Bible said that Satan was cast down. Now when he was cast down, uh, you can see it in Job. The Bible said, uh, asked the question, uh, Satan, where you been? He said, I've been walking to and fro, up and down in the earth, operating up and down in the earth, to and fro, east and west, and north and south. And uh, many think that the devil is able to be all places at all times, but he can't. Y'all hear me? God is the one omnipresent. God is the only one omni, uh, uh, omnipotent, all powerful. Lucifer is a not even a glimmer of what God is. All right. All right? And so then what, what, what happens is that so many times we think that the devil is just, you know, he knows all these things. He doesn't know everything. So when the Bible says he was cast down, uh, the scripture lets us know. Now, later on, the scripture says he became the prince and the power of the air. Now, do y'all know how he got up in the air? Let me explain it to you. You know, I said, Pastor, you preaching, you tell us. <laughs> <laughs> when he was cast down, the only way that he could regain some sort of authority was when he called Adam and Eve to see. The Bible lets us know. See, when Adam, Adam and Eve gave up their authority, when they gave in to the, to the devil, then he was elevated to the prince and the power of the air. Because he had been cast down by Michael and his angels all the way to the ground. And Jesus said, I even beheld him as lightning as he hit the earth. But when Adam and Eve sinned, then he was elevated to be the prince and power of the air. He never was again able to go into the heavens. But the prince and powers of the air, someone said the air. Yeah. So he did not elevate again because he his his whole statement was, I will assault, uh, I will ascend above the mountains of God. And I will uh, stand on the right side of the mountains of, of the Most High. And he was, I will do this and I will do that. But no, he can only go up so far. So the Bible said what we're wrestling against right now is powers, principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. Now we're still wrestling with the devil, struggling with the devil, but he has no power like he used to have. Let's see what Genesis 3 and 15 says because it gives us the foundation. Genesis 3 and 15, and it reads, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, mm -hmm. and between thy seed and her seed. Uh -huh. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his head. Now, do you not see where the Bible refers to the seed of the woman as it? Am I say it? it? Does not refer to the seed of the woman as he, him or her or as man? The reason being, in St. Luke, the first chapter and the 31st verse, read what it says. 35? 35, I'm sorry. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, mm -hmm. and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Mm -hmm. Therefore also that, that holy thing... That holy what? Thing. That holy Somebody thing. Said thing. Right. Jesus was referred to as a holy thing because he was not uh, just man, and he was not just God. He was all man and all God. Somebody said all man all and all God. So the Bible says this holy thing. Can everybody say amen? Y'all make like I just made that up. <laughs> That's why the scripture says that the seed, it shall. Not he shall, but it shall. God encapsulated himself in, in, in man. Uh, the Bible says that he created a body. Because Jesus asked what he said, uh, Lord, come in the volume of the books to do thy will, O God. And he says, 
Thou hast prepared me a body. So here's God. He's all God. Jesus was always all God, but he was all man. That's why the Bible says you are a new creation. Okay, I'm losing everybody. The reason you are a new creation is because you're not the old person. You're not, I'm not talking about in character. I'm talking about you're not the old person in spirit, body, and soul. You are a new creation. And the reason you are a new creation is because now that you're in the body of Christ, you are literally spiritually, the Bible says, baptized into his body. And because he is a holy thing, and it, the seed of the woman, that's what's going to crush the head of the serpent. Oh, y'all too quiet in here tonight. Y'all stay with me. Because we were made a promise in Genesis 3 and 15. It will be the seed of the woman. Guys, it's the seed of the woman. It's the seed of the woman. God made the promise through. <laughs> Lay every woman should have said amen. Men have elevated themselves above all of mankind. Men have said that we are it and you are to submit unto us. Haven't men said that? Some men believe that. And one of the reasons God pulled you out of the side, he didn't pull you out of the foot. All right. He didn't pull you out of the back. He brought you out of the side. And he saved the best for last. For he said, that which is last, I will make it first. Y'all stay in here with me. And if men, they outside of mankind can understand it's not about men. Because in Christ, there are no men Amen. or female. The Bible says in Christ. Somebody say in Christ. Christ. There is no male and no female. No Why? Because he's the holy thing. He's the seed. He's that it. <laughs> he said there are no races. There are no Jews. There are no Greeks. There are no black and white. Y'all stop tripping on that black and white. Stop tripping on that black and white. That skin ain't nothing but a color. Amen. That's all it is, it's just a color. Amen. You can be whatever God wants you to be. There, don't you give anybody the power to keep you down. Amen. You can walk in any place with your head up right now. Amen. Come on, y'all stand here with me. But he said the seed of the woman is going to crush that serpent's head. Yeah. So here was the battle. The battle was to get a righteous seed into the earth. Now, let me tell you this real quick. That was one righteous person after the fall of man that was going, the seed was going to come down through, and that was Abel. The Bible called it righteous Abel. Y'all in here with me? Cain killed him. Cain was an evil seed. Stay in here with me. And so Eve, knowing that the seed would come through the woman, she was always looking for a substitute. The Bible bears me out. Watch what he said in Genesis 3 and 3. Now, what, and before we get into that, the reason I, I threw this in, this is kind of a background scripture before I get into what Eve was looking for. In Genesis 3 and 3, read what he said. And God said, let there be light. Uh -huh. And there was light. Oh, he said, let there be light. Everybody said light. Light. He said, and there was light. Then what? God saw the light and what? That it was good. Uh -huh. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God separated that light, that particular light, from the darkness. Now, I'm going to say up front, that wasn't illumination. That wasn't light that we talk, think about the lights being on or the sun or the moon. This is the first day when God said, be, let there be light. That's not illumination. We'll see, see it in just a second. Read what he says. And God called the light day. Uh -huh. And the darkness he called Yeah, that's why it's capitalized. On that in the, in the scriptures because he's not talking about night and day. Read what he says. And the evening and the morning were the first. This day. was the very first day. Look at Genesis uh, one and fourteen. And God said, "Let there be light." And that should I'm sorry that should be Genesis three and fourteen. And it said, "God said, let there be what lights." Pure, plural. Everybody said plural. Lord. I may have my scriptures mixed up, but that's it's maybe Genesis 1 and 14. The other one may be Genesis 1 and 3. So I'm sorry about that. We'll correct that. But the scripture wording is right. In Genesis 1 and 14, and God said, let there be lights. And, read it. In the firmament of, of the heavens uh -huh. to divide the day from the night. Well, I thought he just had lights to 
the five the day and the nights. Let's go back up to Genesis. In the first part there, uh, I believe that's one and three, it should be one and three. And God said, let there be what? Light. Light. And, the, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And that light, God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light what day? Well, we see here in Genesis 1 and 14, here's God now talking about, read it, let there be lights. Let there be lights read it. In the firmament of the heaven uh -huh. to divide the day from the night. So he's talking about two different types of illumination. The first light that God is talking about, and when you read it in the original text, that word light gives the idea of knowledge. Somebody said knowledge. Knowledge. The reason he says knowledge there, God took that whole day just to create, and he says, light. Because that evening and the morning was the first day just to create light. That, that word gives the idea in the Greek, I mean, excuse me, in the Hebrew as knowledge. That's why when you want to keep somebody from knowing something, you say, I'm going to keep them in the dark. Y'all in here? Yeah, there's no reason we're just going to keep them in the dark about that. We're not going to let them know about that. That word is dealing with not God. See, science is not in opposition to God. God is the one who created science. God is the one, y'all stand here with me. God is the one that designed DNA. All of these things was in that first day. God had to have a scientific structure for when he began to put things together. It wasn't out there just because God said it. It was out there with a design. So when he said, let there be light, he was saying, let there be knowledge. Let there be, let there be a, a, a structure and let there be design. That's why then we see in this, in, in this Genesis 1 and 14, he said, these lights that separate the what we call daytime and nighttime. He says that, well, go ahead and read it through. Let, let me show you as you go through it. Read what he said. And let them be for signs. Okay, the, the, the light that he's talking about now is going to be for a sign. Read it. And for seasons. It's going to be determined the seasons. Read it. And for days. It's going to be determined the days. Read it. And years. And the years. Read it. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven. To uh -huh. give light upon the earth. To give light upon the earth. It was so. To give light upon the earth. So that first day when he said, let there be light. It wasn't to give light as we think of illumination upon the earth. It was until this day. Read what he says. And God made two great lights. Uh -huh. The greater light to rule the day. That's the sun. Read it. And the lesser light to rule the That's night. That's the moon. Read it. He made the stars also. Come on, read it. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven uh -huh. to give light upon the earth. Read it. And to rule over the day and over the night. And to divide the light from the darkness, mm -hmm. and God saw that it was good. And watch this, read it. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Somebody said the fourth day. 